Hello, and welcome to the Entrepreneurial Musician, a newsletter, coaching service, podcast, and blog preparing today's musicians for tomorrow's realities. This is TEM 300, titled The Magic of Simply Showing Up. Quickly, wanted to thank Parker Mouthpieces for providing the hosting for TEM and for being just a longtime supporter of the show. Parker Mouthpieces offers fine, customizable component mouthpieces for horn, trombone, euphonium, and tuba, including the Andrew Hitz Artist Model Tuba Mouthpiece. You can find out more at parkermouthpieces.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Okay, before I get to the 300th episode of this little show here, uh, I wanted to give a plug for TEM's newsletter called the Portfolio Career Playbook. Uh, You can join the other musicians who have already signed up to get actionable advice. You can go to signup.tem.fm and you can learn uh, all about it. Uh, I am really enjoying putting this thing out. Uh, It features a weekly email, which is called the Quartet of Ideas. And uh, I get to pay attention to who's clicking on, not who, but how many people are clicking on what stories and, uh, and, and resources and things like that. And then uh, when more people seem to be resonating with a thing, then I kind of tailor the thing moving forward to uh, to be able to serve all of you. So thank you to everybody who has already signed up for that. And uh, please uh, join all of the musicians who already have. It'd be great to have you. 300. It's a round number. I do not know if I... I didn't have a plan of stopping this at any point. Still don't. Uh, but, uh, you know, 300, if you had asked me, if you'd set the over-under for you gamblers, so you'd have to put it at like 299 and a half. You wouldn't put it as, a, as an even number. Uh, I actually don't ever gamble, which is funny because it sounds like I'm an expert now. Uh, I would have taken the under uh, on that because 300, that's a lot. Uh, but here I am. And um, uh, I, I don't want this podcast to sound, or this episode, to sound self-serving. Um <laughs> because the you know the, the subject is the magic of simply showing up, and uh, I don't want it to sound like if you just keep showing up, then amazing things happen like me. Uh, but but uh, but it's it's true. I'm like I'm filled with gratitude, and uh, and and all of it is the result of continuing to show up for TEM. I wanted to start by uh, just saying a huge thank you to everybody who has helped me to get to 300 episodes. First of all, I could not have done it without my Patreon patrons. Uh, You all are the best. There are some of them that have been with me for years, years and years and years, and uh, you make this whole thing go. Uh, There's just a lot of ongoing expenses uh, to say nothing of the enormous amount of time that it takes to uh, to write this and to record it and to edit it and to master it and to distribute it and to put it up on the web and everything and and that's all possible because of you and so uh, I just I cannot thank you enough from the bottom of my heart. Uh, I want to thank my wife uh, who has uh, made a lot of sacrifices. Uh, there have been plenty of times where I'm like, I'm going downstairs to interview someone or I'm not free on Saturday morning because I've got to do blank. Uh, a lot of TEM work. Uh, she puts up with me not coming to bed until like after midnight sometimes because I am uh, doing like a you know TEM coaching client in some faraway country. Uh, she, Tiffany, you are uh, you are amazing. And uh, every single listener that I've ever had, uh, those who have uh, reached out and told me uh, that uh, you know that 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 you appreciate things, also those of you who just listen uh, quietly or watch on YouTube and uh, and don't ever reach out, um, if this wasn't resonating with people, then I would stop. Um, and uh, because, like I already said, it's a lot of work, and I love the work. But uh, I am at the age. I'm at the ripe age. I'm going to turn 48 here in a little less than two months. And uh, that's about the age when you start thinking about impact. And when what you're spending a lot of time on doesn't have impact, then at some point that little voice gets a little louder and then a little louder and then a little louder and then tells you that you should maybe be spending uh, some, you know, your precious remaining time, which I hope, knock on wood here, hope I got, uh, you know, many decades left. Who knows? Nobody gets to know ahead of time. But um, but yeah, this seems to be resonating with people, and I learn a lot from it and from interacting with all of you, and so I'm going to keep doing it. So, uh, all right, that was a little longer than I intended on talking uh, about the show slash myself, but um, 
But uh, anyway, I'm just going to honor system. You all need to go to andrewhits.com. You all have to read my full bio. I was going to read it for you now, but as long as you all just agree to do that on your own time, uh, <coughs> I'm counting on you, then then I can stop talking about myself. All right. So the uh, the meat of the episode here, it's a, it's a short but sweet one. Uh, magic rarely comes from showing up once or twice. Songwriting doesn't work that way. Networking doesn't work that way. Hosting a podcast doesn't work that way. Having a successful newsletter doesn't work that way. Finding your musical voice on stage or as a producer in the studio uh, or on a microphone talking to a crowd, none of it works that way. The magic comes from showing up over and over again. That means when you are at your best. It also means when you are very much not. It means when you feel like it and when you don't. It means when you have gotten a bunch of positive feedback recently. Uh, that's when uh, our jobs are easy, right? As performers, as, uh, as hosts, as coaches, as whatever. Um, but we also need to show up when it feels like everyone is cutting us down. Sometimes it feels that way because people are. Other times it feels that way because we got like one two-star rating uh, on Apple Podcasts and we ignore the fact that the last 12 were all five stars because that one that jumps out is that two-star. It's not like the fifth five-star review, right? Um, we have to show up when doors seem to be opening all on their own. Uh, if you've been doing this long enough, then you have had one of those stretches where it's like such and such band or ensemble calls, and it's like, whoa, they they you know they hire you, and it's awesome. And then this person wants to partner with you, and then this, and it all works out, right? Then there are other times when, uh, let's say, some uh, steady gig that you have played uh, dries up, um, or uh, you're a contractor and uh, the church. This happened to me. I was contracting a really sweet uh, at a really sweet church uh, here in the D.C. area. Uh, I had a real connection with the music director. I mean, he had uh, had hired Boston Brass to come and play on that church's uh, concert series. So you know, I've known him for many many years. Uh, everything got shut down uh, during COVID, obviously, and so there was you know there was no uh, Christmas Eve or Easter gigs. Uh, and then in the middle of COVID, I didn't realize this, but uh, he actually retired, uh, which wasn't, I guess, shocking. Although I, I was, you know, I was thinking about like kind of the world collapsing and not whether the music director at the church I was, uh, you know, um, that I was doing the contracting for was retiring or not. The new person came and uh, did not uh, didn't hire any of us back, uh, but that's because the new music director has decided that Easter is decided with a small string orchestra, which to me is just absolute blasphemy, right? Because you got it's like Easter is celebrated by highly paid brass players. It, it says it in some uh, important places. I'm just, that uh, that's what I'm told anyway. Um, so he didn't, I don't think that that guy came in and, uh, you know, and heard a recording uh, of the group, which was always absolutely killer. I mean, it was, a, it was a really good gig. So I got like the best of the best in D.C., um, uh, which is saying something because of all the military bands and professional orchestras here. I don't think he heard us and was like, nah, it's not good enough. He just, he decided he wanted strings. And guess what? He did not hire me to play the cello because I don't play the cello. So anyways, you got to show up when the doors are opening on their own. You have to also keep showing up when doors are closing, whether they're closing because of circumstance or they're closing because of you. The point is that the magic happens when you simply show up and you keep showing up and um you know seth godin who um uh, if you're uh, if you're <laughs> brand new to the podcast i have a tendency to quote uh, from time to time uh i i think i might quote seth godin more than seth godin does and of course he quotes himself every time he speaks but uh but anyway um, he he breaks down. And he's not the only one. I've I've heard some other people, um, you know, talk about this. Um, but uh, you know, the like the definition of a professional, right, is somebody who shows up whether they feel like it or not, right? And uh, and I think that there's that there's really uh, that there's that there's value there. And this is not. Uh, I want to be really clear. I am not talking grind culture here, right? I'm not talking hustle. I'm not talking about ignore your mental health. 
Uh, in fact, I just took a, um, well, geez, it's been like a month and a half break from, um, from Brass Junkies, which came out every two weeks for, uh, for eight, eight or nine years. Like every two weeks. There was one episode that was one day late. Uh, my father passed away. And, uh, and I just kind of hit pause and it's going to get, you know, it's going to kick uh, back up here shortly, but I, I hit pause. I just did. Uh, and I just kind of needed to, and I wasn't really in the mood to be doing like, you know, long form interviews with people. I also wasn't in the mood. I just wasn't up for like tracking people down and scheduling it and just doing all that. And I've also been away from home, from my studio. Um, and so it got paused and, uh, and that's gotta be okay. And I lost a whole bunch of money because my Patreon patrons pay me per episode. And so I'm now like three episodes in. It's like, yeah, it's a, it's a lot of money. Um, but, uh, but you know, and my costs like keep coming in. There's been a few just because when it rains, it pours. There's been a few annual costs that have, uh, you know, like subscriptions that have come in in the last like month and a half, which just kind of hurts even more. Um, but that's okay. So I'm not talking about like, you know, you show up whether you need a mental health break or not. I'm just saying that you just gotta, you gotta keep showing up and keep showing up and keep showing up and don't have, whether you show up, be dependent on other people's opinions or on, uh, on whether it's really convenient for you. And, um, eventually you get to 300 episodes of, uh, TEM and obviously I'm, I'm, uh, rich and, uh, and, and world famous. I can't even go to the grocery store anymore. Um, that's, that's not true. Neither of those are true, which is why you should become a Patreon patron, but no, i I've got no complaints and, uh, and I adore the relationship that I have with the TEM uh, audience and the TEM community. And, uh, yeah, I just cannot, uh, I cannot thank all of you, uh, enough. So the magic comes from showing up and showing up over and over again. So that is my advice to you this week. Now the quote uh, which is from uh, Brene Brown, um, who is just awesome. Um, her quote is, Vulnerability is about showing up and being seen. It's tough to do that when we're terrified about what people might see or think. So you got to have the courage, and it takes courage. You have to have the courage to show up and be seen. Because if you have the courage over and over again then that's when you get the magic. And so the courage, you know, magic comes out of having courage. Uh, here is uh, a second, I only plug it once uh, per episode, and I don't even plug it every episode, but uh, another plug for the uh, the Portfolio Career Playbook is that uh, this week's episode, which you can also find at uh, tem.fm slash blog, this week's episode, one of the links from the Quartet of Ideas was a, a really cool uh, article called How to Stop Caring What Others Think. And uh, the shortcut is to just keep showing up and then while others are deciding whether you what you did is any good, like show up again. Right. And uh, but but really, it's just, you know, and that article does give some uh, give some specific tips, which uh, which I found really helpful. I think that the, the one paragraph blurb I put in there was something like I'm really good at not caring what others think, except for when I'm really bad at it, <laughs> which is why I found that thing helpful, because there are times when I'm really bad at it. But you just got to keep showing up and, and having the courage to be vulnerable the courage to be generous, and then the magic will show up. Uh, it shows up quickly sometimes. Sometimes it uh, it takes a long time, but it will show up if you keep on uh, serving people and, and having the courage to do that. So thank you very much for your attention, the most valuable commodity any of you have to give. Uh, and I just, again, I've already kind of thanked everybody. I've plugged everything to death 300 episodes. Uh, I am uh, looking forward to getting to 400. That's another round number. And uh, thank you all for being on this journey with me. Peace.